Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and assemble company. It is Friday night, so it is our children's story night. And tonight we go wild from Britain, from Italy, spreading ourselves around the world. So without further ado, can we give oh. David and Simona a huge round of applause? Did, did we get a round of applause there? I'm walking in the sun. I can't see a thing. I'm avoiding cars as they come around the corner. Uh, I'm now crossing the road and I'm going to pass it all over to Mr. David Heathfield for the remainder of the program so I can continue walking without bumping into walls, etc. David, over to you. Thank you, John. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I've got my frog here. Can you hear my frog? And oh, I'm in yes, England. Are, I'm in Exeter. Here. In England. And I can see there are people listening in many parts of the world. We've got people in England, in Italy, in Nigeria. Baba C's over there in the United States. Louis and Mike are in different parts of England. It's fantastic. We're going wild. We're going all over the world and my frog is saying it's time oh look there's another frog over there I, my frog's gonna hop over to italy to say hello to simona here it is can you hear my frog so thank you all for being here are you ready to start? Of course. Ready? Okay. So, I've got a first story for you. And this will be the story of something that happened to me when I was just a little girl. My mom had sold me a cloak with a hood. It was red and I would wear it everywhere. So everybody had started calling me Little Red Riding Hood. One day, my mom told me that my grandma was sick. And she was go to find her, to go to her house, to bring her something to eat because she couldn't go herself. She had to work. I said, yes eager to go on an adventure of my own. So my mom gave me a basket full of food and three warnings. She said, don't go into the forest. Don't talk to people you don't know and don't tell anybody where you're going. I said, yes, mom. And I set off on my journey and I was walking on the path that ran next to the forest, when suddenly something red caught my eye. I looked and I picked a strawberry. It was big and red. I ate it and mm, it was delicious. And then I remembered that my grandma's favorite fruit was strawberries. So I decided that I would pick some strawberries to bring her. How happy would she be? So I picked strawberries, but when I finished and I looked up, I realized that I was in the middle of the forest. I could hear my mom's voice in my head saying, don't go into the forest, but what could I do? I looked around, but I couldn't find the path anymore. Everything I could find was a second path that ran inside the forest. Well, this path has to lead somewhere, I told myself. So I started walking. And then I started walking faster because the forest was dark and scary and there were strange noises coming from the trees. I walked until I came to a place where the path divided in two. 
I stopped and I thought, where should I go? And then I asked out loud, where should I go? And the voice answered me. Can I help you? I looked and there in the trees, there was a creature looking at me. The creature had two big yellow eyes, two big furry ears, a long nose, a big mouth full of sharp teeth. It was a wolf. Can I help you? The wolf repeated, and I could hear my mom's voice in my head saying, don't talk to people you don't know. But what could I do? I was in the middle of the forest and the wolf was there in front of me asking me if he could help me. So I said, wolf, which way should I go? Well, it depends where you're going. I could hear my mom's voice in my head saying, don't tell anybody where you're going. But how could the wolf help me if I didn't tell him where I was going? So I told him, I'm going to my grandma's house. She lives on the other side of the forest. Oh, then you have to go right. Goodbye. Oh, thank you. And I started walking. <laughs> Then I will go left as fast as my legs will carry me. I was walking, I was walking and then I saw light and in front of me, my grandma's house. My heart leapt with joy. I had gone into the forest and there I was. I had talked to the wolf and there I was. I had told the wolf where I was going, and there I was. I ran, and I knocked at the door. Come in, my dear! I entered the house, and I looked at my grandma. And I have to confess that I thought that she must have been really sick, because she looked awful. Grandma, what big eyes you have! All the better to see you with, my dear. Well, that seemed fair enough. So I said, Grandma, what big ears you have. All the better to hear you with, my dear. Well, that seemed fair enough as well. So I said, Grandma, what big mouth you have. All the better to Eat you with! Ah! The next thing I knew, I was inside my grandma's belly. It was dark there, and I couldn't see anything. But I could hear someone crying in the distance. Who's there? I asked. Little Red Riding Hood, is that you? I'm your grandma. Grandma, I asked, how can you be here? Who's outside if you're here? Oh, little Red Riding Hood, said my grandma. That was the wolf. He ate you and then, well, he ate me first and then he ate you as well. Oh, grandma, I said, realizing for the first time what had happened. Come here, my dear, let's hug each other. And I felt calm and safe in my grandma's arms, even if I didn't know what would happen with us. And then we heard that the wolf was starting to move. And we heard a muffled voice in the distance, but we couldn't really make out what the voice was saying. And then a shot. And the wolf... <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs>
Oh dear, I think my days are done. And then a ripping sound. A ripping sound. And light. Grandma, Grandma, come! I told my grandmother, and to get together we climbed outside the wolf's belly. And in front of us stood a hunter. He had saved us. And in that moment, uh, I understood something really important, that you must always listen to your mom's warnings. Simona, that was absolutely terrifying. I love the way you can throw your voice. Absolutely amazing. Wow. Turn on your cameras, everybody. Let's give Simona a big, a big wave of our hands to show how much we appreciate a new version of Little Red Riding Hood. Woohoo! Simona, have you got the frog? Yes. I need. What's the frog saying? He's telling me that it's time to hop back to Exeter because it's time for a story by David. Yes, I think that's what she's saying. Oh, thank you. Back to Exeter. <coughs> Definitely time for a story, Frog says. So, going to travel all the way from Europe where Little Red Riding Hood comes from in all its versions, although I'm sure there are variations and variants in many cultures. And I'll tell you a variant, let's call it a, a parallel story that's popular in Korea. And I was told this story by a student called Un Ji Cho. Un Ji Cho, this is the story that you told me, and now I'm going to share it with all of you. A story from Korea. Long, long ago, when the only things that lit up the sky were the shining stars, there was a mother, a son and a daughter, and they lived in a little cottage deep in the forest at the top of the mountains. One day, the mother said, Children, I must go down through the forest to the village to work. And when I return at the end of the day, I will bring in my basket three rice cakes, one for me, one for you, my son, one for you, my daughter. Whatever you do, open the door to nobody but me. You know, in this forest, there are tigers. And she put her basket on her arm and she left the house and down the mountain and through the trees she went. Down and down and down. And there in the village she worked so hard and at the end of the day, the children's mother took in her basket three rice cakes, big rice cakes covered in rice flour, one for herself, one for her son, and who was the other one for her? I can't hear you. Turn on your microphones. Daughter. I, I know that you're listening now. Lovely daughter. <laughs> So she put those three rice cakes in her basket and she set off from the village and back home and through the trees and up the slope and higher and higher and dusk was coming, it was getting darker, only the stars were sparkling, remember? When out from the dense forest, out from the trees, sprang a golden... Tiger. Tiger? Tiger. Oh, oh, I'm hungry, said the tiger. I've heard that voice before. I'm going to eat you, woman. Me, said the mother. 
I'm a small woman and you're a big tiger. I would not satisfy your great hunger. But in my basket, I have three rice cakes. One for me, one for my son, one for my daughter. You can have mine, I suppose. And she took out the rice cake and she threw it up in the air. And the tiger sprang and caught the rice cake and began to eat. And the mother hurried on with her basket over her arm with how many rice cakes in it? Two. Two. Oh, you can unmute yourselves for this story, everybody. There were two rice cakes, but do you think one rice cake was enough for the tiger? Oh, no, indeed, no. The tiger had finished eating and ran and sprang and leapt and stood before the woman. It's not enough. I'm going to eat you. No, said the mother. Oh, I suppose... (laughs) I'll have to give you my son's rice cake. And she took out the big flower covered rice cake and tossed it higher than before. And the tiger leapt and caught the rice cake and the mother hurried on towards her home. Do you think she's gonna get there in time? No. No, indeed. The tiger had eaten the second rice cake, dashed forward and sprang and bounded in front of the mother. I'm still hungry. I'm going to eat you. Oh, but there's only one rice cake left in my basket. What should I do? Should I let the tiger have me or my daughter's rice cake? What do you think? Daughter's rice cake. You sure? (laughs) Took out her daughter's rice cake and she hurled it as high as she could. And the tiger leapt high into the sky, caught the rice cake, and the mother hurried. Did she get home in time? Yes, yes, hopefully so. Put your fingers in your ears if you're feeling frightened because that tiger was quick and that tiger was hungry and he ran after the mother and he leapt on her and he gobbled her up. But not before he had taken her clothes because the tiger remembered about the daughter and the son. And the tiger dressed in the mother's clothes and took the mother's basket, which was empty except for a little flower in the bottom. And the tiger followed the path up to the top of the mountain. And there the tiger found the cottage. Well, inside the cottage, the boy and the girl were waiting. They were tired and they were very, very, very hungry. The tiger knocked on the door. Who is it? It's your mother. But, but, but our mother doesn't have a voice like that. Our voice mother has a soft, high voice. <laughs> yes, 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 your mother, said the tiger. Mother, said the children, show us your hand. And the tiger put his great hairy paw in front of the window. But our mother has soft white hands, not hairy ones like that. Ah! The tiger remembered the basket. Do you remember what's in the basket? The tiger put his hairy paw in the basket, rubbed it around, covered it in soft white flour and showed it again. And it was soft and white. And the boy and the girl, oh no, they opened the door. In came the tiger, dressed in their mother's clothes. Mother? You look different than before. She looked around the house. And when she turned her back, what do you think the children noticed? 
coming out from under the back of her dress, but the long, golden tiger's tail. 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 Quick, brother, quick, sister. And out of the door, they ran and they ran and they ran into the forest to where there was the well. And there was the well, and there was a great high tree, and the children jumped into the low branches and climbed up. But the tiger was after them. The tiger was furious. Come back here. And the tiger ran and came to the well. But there was no sign of the boy and the girl, and the tiger was getting hungry again. The tiger looked down the well. At the bottom of the well there was some water, but there in the water were the boy and the girl looking up. I can see you. Do you think they were really in the well? It was their reflections looking down from the tree above. The tiger reached with his long, sharp claws to catch them and to scratch them. But the tiger couldn't reach, and up in the tree, the brother and sister couldn't help laughing (laughs) at the foolish tiger. (laughs) Big mistake, because the tiger heard. The tiger looked up. I see you! And the tiger sprang up into the low branches and began to climb up. The children climbed up, but the tiger was coming behind them. Higher and higher, can you climb with me? Show me. Higher and higher and higher and higher, and already they were at the top of the tree. What are we going to do? And the brother and sister called, O Lord of heaven, let down a rope. If you would like to save us from the tiger, may the rope be strong. But if you want the tiger to eat us up, then send down a rotten rope. And do you know what? A rope tumbled down from the heavens. And the boy and the girl, they jumped and caught hold of the rope and began to climb. And the rope was pulled up, but the tiger reached. But too late. The tiger couldn't catch the rope, and the boy and the girl had vanished. Oh, Lord of heaven, cried the tiger, if you want me to have a tasty meal and eat that brother and sister, then let down a rope. And believe it or not, a rope tumbled down from heaven. And the tiger jumped and caught the rope and started to climb. But I wonder if any one of you children can guess what happened. Turn on your cameras. If anybody can guess what happened when the tiger climbed the rope. I want to know your ideas. Any of the children? Kimaya. What do you think happened? Kimaya in Kathmandu. What do you think happened when the tiger caught hold of the rope and began to climb? It probably it probably failed and it fell down. Kimaya was listening because this rope wasn't a strong rope. This rope was a rotten rope. Rotten rope. And the tiger was so big and the tiger was so heavy that the rope snapped and the tiger tumbled down and down and crashed to the earth below. Up in heaven, the Lord of heaven turned the boy into the sun and the girl became the moon, and she shone and brightened the night, and he shone and illuminated the day. But you know, the sister was afraid of the dark, and she cried, and she said, oh brother of mine, let us change places, and so they did. 
the brother became the moon, and the sister became the sun. And when she rose, because she was shy, her cheeks burned red, and that warmth reached the world below. And this is the story of how the sun and the moon came to be. This story I learned from Unji Cho from Korea. Thank you, Unji Cho. And do you hear the similarities between Little Red Riding Hood and the story of the sun and the moon and the tiger? Yes, of course you do. What, little frog? Time to hop back to Monza in Italy. All right, then. Hop away. Whee! Oh, here it is. Uh, our little frog. What? It's time for another story? Do I have to tell another story? Okay, I'll do that. So this story is about Nasruddin. Does anybody know Nasruddin? No, who Luis? Well, Nasruddin is a good guy and this is a story about him. One day, Nasruddin decided to go to his best friend's house. The only problem was that his best friend lived very, very far away from him and Nasruddin had to cross a whole desert and a whole jungle to reach his house. So Nasruddin set off on his long journey and he crossed the desert and everything went well. It was a little bit too hot for him, but everything went well. And then he came to the jungle and he started crossing the jungle. He was walking when suddenly he heard some footsteps from behind him. He looked back and saw that following him was a tiger. Oh, this is not good, thought Nasruddin. Well, I've always wanted to start jogging to keep fit. I think this is the right moment. I'll start jogging right now. So Nasruddin started jogging. But when he looked back, he saw that the tiger had also started jogging. Well, this is not good, thought Nasruddin. I think I'll start running a bit faster. And so Nasruddin started running a bit faster. But when he looked back, he saw that the tiger had also started running a bit faster. Well, this is not good, thought Nasruddin. I think I'll start running as fast as I can. And so Nasruddin started running as fast as he could. But when he looked back, he saw that the tiger had also started running as fast as she could. And so Nasruddin kept on running and glancing back and glancing back. And while he was looking back, he didn't see that he had come to the edge of a cliff. And Nasruddin fell down the cliff. Ah! But fortunately, he could catch the branch of a tree that was sprouting out from the cliff. He looked up at the branch and he saw that the branch was not strong enough to hold its weight. It was starting to rip. Nasruddin looked up and he saw that the tiger had approached the edge of the cliff and was looking down at him. Well, this is not good, thought Nasruddin. So he looked down and down he could see two things. The first thing was that the cliff was not high enough for him to fall down and hurt himself. And that was good news. But the second thing he saw was that below him, looking up at him, was a second tiger. 
Well, this is not good. So Nasruddin, he looked at the branch that was ripping. And then he looked beside him and he saw a strawberry. He picked the strawberry, he looked at it and he ate the strawberry. Mm. It was delicious, the best strawberry he had ever eaten. Well, at least I'll die happy, thought Nasruddin, and the branch ripped off and Nasruddin fell to the ground. The tigers started approaching him, slowly studying their prey. But when they came close to him, they stopped, they looked at him, and they went away. Do you want to know why? Yes, 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 yes. They were short-sighted tigers. And after having had a closer look at him, they decided that they didn't really want to eat him after all. So this is the story how Nasruddin ran away from the tigers and was safe. Thank you. I think my frog is telling me it's time to hop back to Exeter. Are you ready, David? Oh, frog's here. Wow. And Simona, I guess if that's a Nasruddin story, it must also come from somewhere in Asia. Fantastic. You don't know where, but it's there. Let's head down to Africa. We're going round the world. We're going wild. And I can see my friends, Rashidat and Radaya and Raihana in, uh, in Nigeria. Hi. And this story is told in Nigeria. So I hope I get it right. <laughs> this is a story for everybody to join in. So please turn on your microphones, turn on your cameras and join in the story with me. And by the way, while I remember, if any of you watching live or any of you watching the recording would like to make a donation, then go to the World Storytelling Cafe website, make a little donation and half of it will go to Simona and half of it will come to me. So the next story comes from Nigeria and I'm going to tell it with your help. Mm -hmm. Jimbe! Long ago, there lived a girl and her name was Ifeoma. And Ifeoma lived with her mother and her father in a small village along a sandy track not far from the ocean. Daughter, Never go down to the sea alone after dark. You know, in the sea, there are spirits that will catch you and take you away. Well, one day, Ifeoma was with her friends and they said, Ifeoma, Ifeoma, come down to the sea. We will play together. Come down to the sea. Well, the sun is shining. It should be safe. So Ifeoma went down the sandy track to the shore and there was the sea and along the shore they played. And Ifeoma there in the waves saw the most beautiful shell. What a wonderful shell. And Ifeoma thought, this shell is so smooth and beautiful, I should keep it. And she found there was a hole in the shell. And Ifeoma blew. <laughs> wow! Her friend.
friends came running. Ifeoma, Ifeoma, let us play with the shell. And all the friends held the shell and played. And after a while, they put the shell on a rock. And they continued to splash and play and run and dance and enjoy themselves. But now the sun was setting over the sea. Ifeoma, we must go back to the village. And together the children went along the sandy track. But halfway back, Ifeoma remembered. She had left behind the... Shell. Shell. Friends, friends, come back with me. I will, I will get the shell from the rock where I left it on the shore. Come back with me. No, Ifeoma. No, Ifeoma. It's getting dark. The spirits will come from the sea. They might take you away. Oh, I will go alone, said Ifeoma. Do you think, friends, do you think that I can go down there alone? Yes. Don't do it. Should I do it? Don't do it. I want to hear everybody's idea. Should no. I go? No. No. But, but I want That's that stinky. shell. Oh, my friends, I'll be okay. There won't be a problem. And Ifeoma went back down the sandy track towards the shore. And as she came closer, she heard a drum. And when she got to the shore, there on a rock, where the shell had been, sat a huge, massive, Powerful, evil ogre. Is this what you're looking for? Come and take it. Ifeoma came close to the shell. She reached for the shell. But the ogre took the girl. And the ogre took the skin from the drum and put Ifeoma inside the drum. The ogre sealed the drum with the skin. Now you are in my power. When I beat my drum, you will sing. If you do not sing, Oh, you need to sing. All night, Ifeoma was alone in the drum, afraid. The next day, the ogre took the drum and went along the sandy shore. The ogre came to a village, a fishing village, not Ifeoma's own village. People of the village, I have a singing drum. When I beat my drum, my drum will sing and you will dance. If you enjoy the dance, you will bring me food. Sing. Now everybody, turn on your microphones. And when I sing as the ogre, you will respond as the girl inside the drum. Are you ready? Let's Go. Oh yeah. 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 Well, the people they dance, they loved the music. The singing drum and they brought chicken and rice for the ogre to eat. The ogre ate it all, um, 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 and kept nothing for the girl. The people went to their beds and the ogre carried the drum back down to the shore where he slept. And inside the drum, Ifeoma was still afraid. The next day, when the ogre woke, he carried the drum to another village along the shore. 
People of the village, this is my singing drum. When I beat my drum, my drum will sing. You will dance, and if you enjoy the dance, you will bring me chicken and rice. Sing. Oh yeah. 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 Well the people they danced, they danced wild and they danced free. They danced like Louis. They danced like Aisha and Aisha's children. They danced like Manuela. Oh, they all danced like Baba C, like Kimaya. They danced wild and free, like Manuela is dancing. Look at Simona, how she dances so wild and free. And oh, David and Zafi and Francesco and Marika and Dorteo and Arifa and Daniel and Ali. And everybody was dancing so wild. Aisha, aha, and Radia, aho, aha, and Rihanna, I can see, all dancing so free. And they went and they brought chicken and rice. 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 And the ogre ate, um, 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 he ate it all, but there was nothing left for the girl inside the drum. And he carried the drum down to the shore and there he slept and inside the drum she was as hungry as she was afraid. The next day the ogre carried the drum along a sandy track and he came to another village. Can you guess what village it was? Her own village. It what was her say? own village. If they almost own village she'd be missing for so long. People of the village, I have a singing drum. When I beat my drum, my drum will sing. You will dance. If you enjoy the dance, you will bring me chicken and rice. rice. Sing. Oh yeah, Narimbo. 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 Oh, how they dance so wild and free, as free and as wild as that boy Louis. Oh, they danced and they sang, they sang so free. brought chicken and rice. rice. The ogre ate and ate and ate, but there were two people who did not dance. Do you know who they were? The parents. Ifeoma's mother and father. Husband, that is the voice of our daughter inside the drum. Husband, we must free her. Wife, we must, and how will we do it? Bring for the ogre a calabash full of beer. And the husband brought a calabash of beer. Let's drink the beer like the ogre. Aga! 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 Bring me more! And Ithioma's father went and he filled the calabash full of beer and brought it for the ogre. Are you ready, everybody? Aga! 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 Bring me more! And a third calabash of beer was brought to the thirsty ogre. <laughs> Aga! 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 And the ogre dropped the calabash, and the drunk 
ogre sank down to the ground in a drunken stupor, just like Mike. <laughs> the people of the village had gone to sleep. But Ifioma's mother and father, they took the drum. They went to their home. They pulled the skin from the drum and they freed Ifeoma. Our daughter is free. And they cuddled her and they embraced her and they kissed her and they brought her food and she ate and she ate and she ate. She was so hungry. But this is not the end of the story. Oh no, indeed. Ifeoma's father took the drum. He took the drum with no skin. He took the drum into the forest and there in the forest he had brought with him a burning stick from the fire in the middle of the village. He found in a tree a bee's nest and he held the burning stick under the nest so all of the smoke went into the nest and the bees became sleepy and drowsy. And Ifioma's father collected those stinging bees and put them inside the drum. Then he took another stick and he thrust that stick inside the bees nest until it was coated with sweet and sticky honey. 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 That's right. And he took that honeyed stick and he came to a nest of fire ants. And he put the stick inside the nest of ants until the ants covered the stick. It was black with ants. And he pulled out the stick and he put the biting fire ants into the drum. And then if Fioma's father used his cunning as a hunter and caught a poisonous snake and he put the poisonous snake inside the drum and he carried the drum back to the village and he put the skin back on the drum and he left the drum beside the sleeping ogre in the morning the ogre woke <sighs> i will take my drum and leave you no said the people of the village, who had already risen. Oh, no, dear ogre, play for us again. Your singing drum, your magical drum, we will dance and we will bring you more chicken and... Rice. Rice. Mm. Very well, said the ogre. And he picked up the drum and he said, Sing. But you know, and I know that inside that drum there was no longer any girl. And when the ogre sang, no one answered. Shh. Oh, yeah. Sing. Oh, yeah, Narimbo. I said sing, or you will be beaten. Oh yeah, Narimbo! The ogre was so angry, he took the drum and he left the village. He went down the sandy track to the shore, followed by Ifeoma's father, who hid among the trees. And Ifeoma's father watched as the ogre ripped the skin from the drum and out of the drum came the stinging bees and bees. Sting, 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 sting. They stung him all over. Out of the drum swarmed the biting fire arms. Ants. And out of the drum came the poisonous yes. 
snake. And the snake bit the ogre on his wrist and the poison entered the ogre's body and the ogre oh crumbled into a pile of dust and there on the shore a wind blew and carried the dust away and over the sea and Iphioma's father came out from his hiding place he took the drum he replaced the skin he took the shell and returned to the village. People of the village, gather round. Hear my daughter's story, Ifeoma tell. And Ifeoma told her tale. And all of the people listened. And when they had heard the story, amazed, they said, let us celebrate. Ifeoma is alive and the ogre is gone. Let us dance and sing. And do you know what they played? Who played the drum? Do you think it was Ifeoma's mother? Do you think it was Ifeoma's father? No. no indeed. It was Ifeoma, Ifeoma herself. Okay. Let's sing! Let's dance! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Narimbo! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Narimbo! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Narimbo! Oh yeah! Narimbo! you. Do you think that Ifeoma ever blew into the conch again? I don't know. The story doesn't say. I wonder what would happen if she did. It's a story from Nigeria. Rashidat, Radia, Raihana, do you know this story? No, I've never heard of it before. Well, I, I know the name. Thank you so much. I, I know the name as a, as a Nigerian name. Ifeoma. You know, yes. when I learned that story, I learned that story as the girl. But I met a student from Nigeria many years ago who was very alone here in Exeter. And we became, well, we, we, we didn't become friends, but I, I asked her if I could tell this story and she loved it. And I said, can I tell the story and give the girl your name? And she said, yes, please. <laughs> so ever since that time, I called the girl Ifeoma after the Nigerian woman who I met in Exeter many years ago. So thank you so much. And the frog is talking and says there's time for one more story. And it's going to hop all the way to Italy, all the way to Monza and Simona Stambazzi. Here it is. Oh, David, the frog is saying that you had ants in your story. And he's telling me to tell a story about a brave ant. Wow. Fantastic. Once upon a time in the jungle, there lived the biggest elephant that the world had ever seen. This elephant was huge and strong, but he was not humble. He loved to remind all the other animals of how strong and of how big he was. So he played tricks on them. One day, for example, he saw a parrot on a tree. The parrot was singing and the elephant told the parrot to bow down to his strength and power. And when the parrot refused, 
the elephant grabbed the tree where the parrot was staying and shook the tree so that the parrot was forced to fly away. In the same jungle, there lived a family of ants. They were hard working ants, but the elephant loved to play tricks on them. And one day he was drinking water from a lake with its trunk. When he saw the ants passing by with some food they had just collected. So he took some water with his trunk and sprayed the ants, ruining all their food. The ants were sad, but one of them was so angry that she shouted at the elephant, We will avenge ourselves! We will avenge ourselves! Just wait and see! The elephant laughed and said, oh, Should I be worried of a little tiny ant as you? Go away before I decide to stump you with my foot. The little ant went away thinking about her revenge. The following day, she saw that the elephant was sleeping. So she crept near him and then she went inside his trunk. And there she started beating him from inside. And the elephant woke up and started screaming, ah! Who's in my trunk? Get out! Get out! But the ant kept on biting. Oh, get out! Please get out! shouted the elephant. But the little ant kept on biting. Please, I beg you, I beg you, get out! said the elephant and he started crying. And in that moment, the ant went out of his trunk and seeing that the cause of all that pain was the little ant, the elephant kept on crying and bent down on his knees and begged the little ant for forgiveness. He promised the ant that he would never play tricks on the other animals again. And the elephant kept his promise. He never played tricks on the other animals again. And the little ants could live happily and peacefully in the jungle. So remember, no matter how small you are, you always have the strength to fight for what you believe in. And this is our final story. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Simona. Wonderful, Simona. Wow. We've had lots of creatures in the stories that we've shared today, Simona and I, Simona over in Monza, me here in Exeter, we've had wolves, tigers, we've had bees, ants, snakes, elephants, my goodness, we've even had an ogre. Gosh, what a lot of imagination. What a lot of wonderful, scary, brave, exciting adventures. What dreams we will have tonight. Sleep, sleep safely, don't have any nightmares. Have good dreams, we beg you. Thank you for joining us for World Storytelling Cafe. And if anybody would like to switch on their microphones and say something to everybody about your your in your your experience of today's children's night goes wild then please do share a comment that was great fun thank you thank you both oh thank you mike thank you we loved all the stories thank you oh thank you very much thank you so much Thank you. I really loved it. Oh, thank you, Louis. I'm glad you loved it. And Louis, I have to say, you are the most fantastic dancer. Look at you see Louis dancing. I mean, it's absolutely fantastic. Oh, oh gosh, thank you.
Oh, great. <laughs> no, it's really brilliant. <laughs> thank you. That was it. Thank you, David and Simona, for making uh, our Friday night. It oh. was fantastic. Is that nice? Who's it, thank you? Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, but, uh, David? Uh, no. Oh, thank you, David. I'm glad you found it an amazing evening. Okay, well, John Rowe had to go for a family celebration, so he couldn't join us for the whole session, but it's going to catch up later. So on his behalf, I'm going to say thank you. Thank you, Ali, for driving the bus so brilliantly as always and having to go back and forth with the help of the frog between Italy and England and all over the world people were joining us so that was absolutely wonderful there's lots more events coming up at the world storytelling cafe i know on sunday there's the worldwide story round so if any people who are would like to share a story then at six o'clock uk time uh, and there'll be more events next week and david you've got an event on monday haven't you i've got a monday uh monday get a go we uh, uh, of I think you've got there's an event the event on Monday I believe is uh, people with disability telling story uh, poems sharing their sharing their experience through um, sharing stories and poems etc so join David uh, who's hosting on uh, Monday uh, do all over the world fantastic no. join uh, uh, thank you so much and kimaya thank you for staying up so late must be very late for you over there in Kathmandu in nepal so no, no, no. good night everybody Oh, David, I think. Oh, David, David, David. Oh, David. Simona, thank you for sorry. Sorry, Simona. I think the other David is writing in the chat. Is that right, David? Yes. Oh, right. Okay. Okay, yeah. we'll wait. We'll wait, and you write in the chat, David. So, Ali, how are things in Morocco? All good, uh, David. Everything is okay for the moment. And there, how are, how is everything? It's a sunny day here in England, but in Exeter, but cold. Is it cold in Marrakesh? No, no, today, it's uh, like today uh, ago. It's a little bit sunny and a little bit hot. Yeah, it's such a little bit sunny. Wonderful. Yeah. And what about in, in uh, Monza, Simona? Is it good weather? Yes, this morning it wasn't, uh, but now it's good. Uh, it's uh, it's springtime uh, finally. Okay. <laughs> we had some uh, freezing days uh, in the last few weeks, but now it's uh, finally spring. So, so was somebody going to write in the chat? Were you writing in the chat, David? Well, two or the one. Ah, oh, there we are. Monday, two world in one. Okay, so that's on Monday's event. Um, disability storytelling and sharing is going to be fantastic. So good night, everybody. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye. Hi, Suheda. We're just finishing. You can watch the recording. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.